Okay, so good evening everyone. We're going to call the meeting to order, our Committee of the Whole meeting for December 12th, 2022. It's 7 p.m. and welcome to our guests in council chambers as well as to everyone around the table and those watching online. Uh, we'll begin with any items added to the agenda and I do have a couple. Um, first is uh, option to, or I guess the discussion on the boundary review. Um, so we could just maybe <coughs> add that under items added, as well as an in-camera item regarding personnel. We just had an update for you there as well. Um, so with those two items added, um, are there any other uh, items for from council? Okay, so uh, could I have a motion to approve the agenda with those additions? I'll make a motion. Thank you, Councillor Digden. It's been moved by Councillor Digden. Could I have a seconder? I'll second that. Thank you, Deputy Warden. It's been moved by Councillor Digden, seconded by Deputy, War or Deputy Warden, that the agenda be approved as presented with those additions. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, that motion is carried. All right, the next item is the review of the minutes from the November 14th, 2022 Committee of the Whole meeting. Those were circulated in advance. Were there any errors or omissions? Okay, if not, could I have a motion to approve, please? I move to the acceptance of the minutes from um, November 14th. Okay, thank you, Councillor Sampson. Could I have a seconder, please? Councillor yeah, Sampson. Seconded by Councillor Sean Sampson uh, for the minutes of November 14th to be approved. Is there any further discussion on those? Okay, good. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? That motion is carried. So now, uh, next on our agenda is a presentation. So I'd like to welcome Rita Campbell uh, from the Johnstown Community Development Cooperative Limited to chat with us about the Irish Cove Walking Trail. And I know, Rita, you have some friends with you in the audience. They can join you here or they can stick with the gallery. However, however you'd like to arrange it is good with us. So. I'm fine here. Okay. <laughs> All right, so welcome, and thanks so much for coming in to chat with us about this today. Okay, thank you. Thank you for having us, and I'll start my timer here. <laughs> um, so, um, yes, uh, I'm from the Johnstown Community Development Co-op, and um, we wanted to um, talk about what we're doing with the walking trail. So I'm just going to, I do have a um, PowerPoint there, and I'm just going to skip over the first two pages because um, what I want to bring your attention to is the map on the third page, because a lot of people probably don't realize that there is actually a, some walking trails in the uh, Irish Cove limestone quarry. And if you're not aware where that is, if you ever stopped at the look-off in Irish Cove and looked down towards the water, all the land on the, down, uh, on the side of the, uh, between the uh, look-off and the water is basically what we're talking about as the old <coughs> limestone quarry. So um, to date, it, it was uh, uh, quarried from the 60s to about 2000, and it was reclaimed, which meant that it was all, you know, it, it, everything rearranged and everything. So it has actually been um, dis disturbed land, which is something important when you're talking about walking trails these days. Um, there, and part of the uh, 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 property is above the highway, but our walking trails are all on the water side of the highway. Yeah. I'm just gonna flip to the next um, thing here. So people have been walking through the quarry to date. There's some, uh, there's some soft trails, people have got, local people have, have walked through there. <laughs> what we want to do is do a formal trail system in through there, and we're looking at doing it in a three year plan, uh, or developing it in three year plan. First year, basically doing the trails that are there. There's three trails. One goes up by a brook. The other one goes through a meadowy area, and the uh, the third one joins basically along the old route, uh, route four highway. Goes around a tailings pond, which is not like the tailings pond in in Shedekamp, but there's beavers living there, and people can skate there in the winter. So uh, we're trying to make those. In the first year, we're going to make those a little more formal, um, and and we're going to groom them. And perhaps, like, a, a just take some of the, there's a couple of places there where we might have to smooth the property out. In the second year, we're going to extend those trails. So each of the trails that are belonging there, that are already there. 
Um, there is some replanting has happened. Nova Scotia Community College and Department of Natural Resources have done some plantings in there. So in our second year a proposal, we have to work with DNR to make sure our trails don't um, go through the planting area or work through where they planted them, the trees. Um, and there is a dedication site already on in within the um, limestone quarry. It's up on a hill and it's dedicated to Lynn Beckler, who was a hydrogeologist who died a few years ago. And it actually has a view of the, um, the whole quarry. Um, in third year, actually, what I like the, the, the idea is that we're going to um, actually add um, access down to the breach. We have about, um, about 800 um, meters of beachfront. Um, provide access and provide a, a dark sky viewing platform um, uh, over the Bredore because we're actually at the widest section of the Bredore Lakes right there. And there's not a lot. If you're looking across for, to Escazoni, so that would be the first light you'd see. Um, in order to do this, because it's, the land, property belongs to is uh, Crown property, we had to, if you look at the next page here, we have we put in an application for use of the land um, with the Department of Natural Resources, and the applicant first application is quite short. They got back to us in June, and we had to do a development plan, and we just sent that in in November, and they just got back to us to to uh, um, let us know that they're reviewing that plan. There's a number of uh, questions they asked us after we put the first application in. And it included things like disturbing the land, which is why I mentioned that it is a quarry that has been disturbed before. Because now, in a lot of cases, if you're disturbing the land, then you do have to do an indigenous archaeological study survey. Um, it, what we're planning to work on here is actually already disturbed land, so we're hoping they'll take that into consideration. It's, it's disturbed from the quarry, and it's disturbed because there is an old highway going through there. Um, they've also asked us, uh, said that they're not going to do, we're not allowed to plant trees, we're not allowed to cut trees. Um, and they talked a lot, uh, or at least when they got back to me, they didn't want the ground disturbed at all, which is very difficult if you're putting signposts and things in. So we did put in, the, in the, our application that um, we do want that. The quarry is actually part two of, um, what we see as a three-part plan. We own Johnstown Landing, which is the property that's right across from the um, um, church and the um, hall, the old hall. And um, we actually have a, um, a water route, a, a Transcanada Trail water route on that property. So we see the quarry, the Johnstown Landing, and a, a, eventually perhaps a path that goes up over Johnstown Mountain and comes back down to the landing to, to join the three. And because we have a water route, we can actually join it by water. So, you know, someone who's, you'd have to be a good kayaker or a good hiker to do this here, but they could join. Um, you could kayak down, you could hike the trail and kayak back. It's kind of a, a neat thing because I don't know how many trails are linked that way. That's, that's our long term goal. But what we need right now, why we'd like to present to you is we would like some support um, to DNR indicating that this is something that, that we would, um, that would be supported from the county. Um, it, 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 match, it meets in with the trail development, I think, strategy that you have in, <coughs> that you just posted, <coughs> which I think you actually included some of our pictures <laughs> in that trail strategy. Um, we're also working, of course, with the Bredore Lake Biosphere with their goal of having trails around mm -hmm. the whole of the Bredore. That's great. And yeah, yeah. So um, see, I'm just talking too fast. It's only six minutes. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so a, a couple, of, I think a couple of other things, as, as I said, um, we see it as it, the things we, we want to do in there, we don't want to disturb the environment. We can do it. It's actually quite nice walking area there now because there's a part that goes through what we consider a meadow. There's a part you can walk kind of along your, ab above the shore. Um, there is parking on the um, one end. It's not a big parking lot, but if it's the, 
the old highway, if you go down to, uh, to where Lakeshore Drive East starts and drive right to the end of the highway, you can park probably about a half dozen cars with no problem there. We don't see that this is going to be anything like, you know, as I said, Shed uh, in Shedda Camp with that uh, uh, tailings pond they have there. Um, this is not a green, a, a beautiful blue tailings pond, but we do have, you know, it is, it is nice and it's got, you know, a nice little beaver in it that you can watch if you're walk, uh, going by there. So um, to us, we're, we're going to try to do it very environmentally friendly. We don't want to put gravel paths. We just want to mow it. And, and it, it, right now, we're just walking on trails that people have gone through ATVs. It, it is, that's the other thing I should mention. It is going to be strictly a um, foot trail, footpath. Um, Cross-country skiing, walking, you can go in there skating in the winter. But and ATVs only for safety and security and for keeping the trail through. But it's not exciting enough for an ATV, really, to attract a lot of ATV usage. But it is, you know, we do want to keep it as a foot trail. And actually, that was one of the things from DNR, is they did not want this as a multi-use trail with ATVs. <laughs> so um, on, on my last slide, I just mentioned that we would like a letter of support, if that's something we could get from you. Um, we also, we have been developing this and for a few years now, working on this very much in our own, you know, kind of world down there. And we haven't been participating in any of the strategies. So we see that as like that, there's actually nice development down there for the other end of the county. So it's, it's nice there. And of course, like everybody else would like to be on the radar for grants or funds that you've got. Mm -hmm. um, the first year we expect that, it, we estimate that it would cost us about $15,000. Second year about 12,000 and third, third year about 6,000. Um, those are you know broad estimates really at this point especially this third year, because I have no idea what it would cost to build a viewing platform. I'm and sure those. what it would cost now would be different than what it would cost in, however, you know, in yes, a couple yeah. of years' time, so we've learned, right? Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. And, and the other thing, uh, thing we see doing in there, because there are people actually in there doing research, uh, Cape Breton University research is, is going on in there. We have on our committee, we're very fortunate to have a hydrogeologist, Fred Beckler, on the committee. Um, and he sees this as, as a, a wonderful site for teaching and doing citizen science. So the signs we are putting in there, we are going to have QR codes on them and link back to, to, to science. Um, in particular, things like the Irish Cold Brook um, uh, have people post the pictures as uh, climate change or as, as uh, time passes. I noticed that after um, the last Hurricane Fiona, a lot of people posted what happened to the Irish Cold Brook there. So this is a way for scientists as well to keep track of, of mm -hmm. um, what's going on there without it actually being there. Okay. So if anybody has any questions. Thank you, Rita. Does anyone okay, have welcome. any questions for Rita? Um, so maybe I'll just start with a quick one. Are there sure. any other groups that are sort of also vying for use of this property or is kind of JCDC kind of taking the lead? Well, JCD, as I said, the local members of the local community are are in there and they're yes. they're doing things and they're on our, our walking trail group. We had a public meeting and oh, great. A, a number of people have indicated interest on keeping it up. They're also interested in going over the mountain, but yeah. that's you know it's a longer term. In the future. In the future. <laughs> um, because we have the, the Johnstown Landing, it naturally fell under JCDC yeah. th that we didn't have another group in there. Uh, however, when we when we did the tree planting, Nova Scotia Community College, the Bedore Lake Seniors were planting there, JCDC it was there. There were a number of other groups that were, were in. Um, we probably have too many groups locally as it is, uh, because we have the, yeah. you know, the parish, the fire department. We've, uh, for a very small community, we've probably got about five groups going. So um, it was kind of nice that we put the walking trail within JCDC yeah. so that we didn't have to start another one. Yeah, that's great. Okay. And just, so how do you get to them? Like, okay, you can, can so you get there from the, from the look-off, or do you have to come in? You can't the get there from the look-off. <laughs> okay. we've, we've explored that because yeah. the other part of going over the mountain is we have to figure out how to get across the highway. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but right now, after you pass the look off and keep down towards Irish Cove, just where you see the beach, yeah. there's a road that Lake goes Shore, in there. Right? 
Um, you could drive all the way in and just park. And there's a bridge um, that's blocked, so you can't take your yeah. vehicle in. And you can just go for a walk there. So there's you can go to the left and just do a small loop. Right. Go to the straight or go to the right. Yeah. Yeah. Or uh, yeah, go right and then left. Mm -hmm. um, we can, if anybody was interested, we have somebody who would take you take a, people through a walk there. We have. Uh, a number of people who walk there every day, actually. Okay. Howard being one. I don't know if you still walk there every day, Howard. Um, it's a good place to take uh, dogs. There is Right now, there is a bit of hunting in there, I think. Um, so fall time might be a little bit... Um, yeah. Hunting but season, I think, should be just about wrapped up for deer anyway. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and there are, there are on Lakeshore Drive um, West and Lakeshore Drive East. Both have... Right. People, have uh, people living there, yeah. especially on Lake Shore Drive West, and they're the ones who, who do the trail right now. Oh, but okay. it's more haphazard. It's like who's got kids out there that, right. that they're, they want to keep busy for a weekend, so they go out and kind of cut maintain, brush. Yeah, mm -hmm. maintain the trail. Yeah. Great. Okay. So um, I think we can certainly request or uh, consider your request for a letter of support. I don't know, councillors, um, you know, we could... Um, this is a committee of the whole, so anything we decide here is really just a recommendation we'll take forward to a regular okay, council yeah. meeting, but uh, we can have a discussion here now about it, or we can just defer it to regular council, um, unless someone would like to make a motion or recommendation. I'd be willing to make a motion to the okay. fact that we draft a letter to the Department of Natural Resources uh, in support of the Irish Cove Trail. Okay. Yeah, Thank you, that, Deputy Morgan. Okay, so it's been moved by Deputy Warden and seconded by Councillor Mike Digden that we draft a letter of support to DNR for the Irish Cove Reclaimed Limestone Quarry Trails Project. <laughs> That's a mouthful. <laughs> Thank you for leaving that on the screen. <laughs> okay. and, it, it, and just so you notice, we used to call it the Irish Cove Limestone Quarry Project, but we kept putting reclaimed in there because it does say that the land has been... Yes. Yeah, for disturbed. Sure. Yeah, the hydrogeologist <laughs> advised us to do that. Okay, yeah. great. So, any further discussion on that motion? All right, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, that motion is carried. So, we'll take that recommendation forward to regular council at okay. the end of the month, and then it will very likely be ratified. I don't see any reason why it wouldn't, and then we'll provide you with a copy of that. Letter okay, thank you. As well. Thank you for coming in. We'd much appreciate it. All right. Um, okay, so next item on our agenda is uh, presentations to Richmond County Food Banks. So I know we have a couple folks from our food banks here with us this evening. Um, so I see Bernice there from St. Peter's, and I think Paul over here from Alma Dam. So we're just going to ask for your patience while we okay. halt the meeting for a minute and maybe capture a picture or two, and sure. we'll do this check presentation. Um, I did want to mention that uh, the Budladeck uh, Food Bank will be supported as well, and we'll drop that off to them this week. And um, I think you have the, the check for the Lordways Food Bank as well and the check for the Bluesdale Food Bank. Am I missing any? I think that's everyone. Okay, so maybe if it's okay, we'll ask uh, Bernice and Paul to come and get a picture, either together or individually, or yeah. we'll stand here, I think. <laughs> yeah, if that's okay. We'll do, we'll do St. Peter's first. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Thanks, folks, from Johnstown. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so I'll present this to you on behalf of Richmond County Council. Thank you for the work you do, Bernice. Much appreciated, you and your team. Much appreciated. All right. By uh, the food bank at St. Peter's and our, and our patrons. Thank you. Very much appreciated. All right. No Thank worries. You. Thanks. Beautiful. Okay. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank so, other counselors from Amadam, would you like to hang out up here with Paul for a minute <laughs> and take get a picture? <laughs> there you go. You could have done it here in the box. That's okay. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. <laughs> you never know when to come out with your food bank. We thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. All right. Thank you for your help with that, counselors. And thanks again, uh, Bernice and Paul, for being here, and to all of the folks who are volunteering with our food banks each year. It's an invaluable service. It's much needed in our communities, and particularly at this time of year. So, so thank you. Um, okay. The next item on the agenda 
uh, is an update on our communications plan. Um, so uh, information provided to Council on this in advance uh, included a little bit of a background on the, the plan that we have right now on the website, which as the CAO I think has confirmed is still a draft format. It wasn't really ever um, adopted formally. Um, and it is more of a statement of intentions rather than a maybe a more of a, less of a concrete plan. Um, and in 2021, um, I know we began work on a communications plan with the county because it didn't, it didn't, it didn't have those specific strategies and tactics. Um, the work was halted in part because we felt that it would be, I guess, better, better completed after the strategic planning process so we could get a feel for what residents were expecting in terms of communication. Um, now with the plan completed, the strap plan completed, we thought this would be a good time to kind of dust off the plan from 2021. The goal being that uh, we create a plan that has achievable, that is achievable and results in consistent and predictable methods of uh, communications that residents can rely upon, which I think we do a lot of now, but it's really to say what we do as well as to do what we say. So it's to kind of capture it in a, in a way that it, it leaves a legacy document and mm -hmm. a, a roadmap for councillors uh, who may be different than us in the future, or mm -hmm. staff who may be different than, <laughs> than the current staff in the future, so that we're, we're being consistent regardless of who's sitting at the table. Um, so I guess at this point, I'd uh, open for discussion. Um, I did provide the draft that had been worked on with the Cape Breton Partnership. Uh, Carly Appleton had been working on that. Um, and just looking for, I guess, councillors' thoughts on whether or not we should reach out to them to Let's you know complete the process and uh, and get this thing over the finish line. So, mm -hmm. folks, be open to that. Yeah, I'm seeing some nodding heads. Oh, yeah. All right. So I guess the motion I would be looking for is to ask staff to reach out to the Cape Breton Partnership for support in revising the June 4th, 2021 draft strategic communications plan. Thank you, Councillor Sean Sampson. Can you repeat that again? The to ask staff to reach out to the Cape Breton Partnership for support in revising the June okay. 4th, 2021 draft okay, strategic Good. I just wanted to, I didn't hear all the parts. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I will second that. Okay, yes. so it's been moved by Councillor Sean Sampson and seconded by Me Councillor Melanie Sampson. Uh, is there any further discussion on that item? I can say uh, on behalf of Shelley and I, we're, we're quite happy that uh, to be part of this now. Uh, yeah. Where we missed the first part of this, this will, you know, because it's going to involve the two of us mm -hmm. an awful lot. So. Uh, helping to finish this off will be uh, at a good framework for us as we go forward so mm -hmm. we can do the assigning just as we're going through it to make yeah. sure that we have people assigned to the task so yeah. it'll be a good process for us to go through mm -hmm. i agree okay any further discussion all right thank you for those comments troy so all those in favor please say aye aye aye, aye. those opposed okay that motion is carried Next item on the agenda is over to you, Deputy Warden Sampson, regarding Chronicle Herald and Cape Breton Post delivery. So this was just in reference to the email I had sent last week. Um, I know many parts of rural Nova Scotia people receive notices. I believe it was back in early November. Now, when looking this up, um, it was a little difficult to find too much information because, of course, I guess the Chronicle Herald and the Cape Breton Post doesn't probably want to publicize it too much. But the fact that rural delivery in a lot of parts of Nova Scotia was being discontinued. Mm -hmm. Um, there are a lot of people, we all have a lot of uh, seniors especially within our districts that aren't all comfortable with using online versions of newspapers. Um, I think this came as a shock to a lot of people and I think it's a pretty big disappointment. Now, I understand it's a, you know, it's a private business and we, we, we obviously can't tell them what to do. But I thought it may be in the best interest of our residents to for a letter on to Saltwire to ask them to reconsider um, just based on the importance of rural news to, to, to a lot of people that may not be comfortable with using the online versions. Great points. Mm -hmm. Okay, any further comments on that? I know I've, I've certainly heard a, mm -hmm. a bit from residents mm -hmm. about this as well um, with their concerns. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? On that? Yeah, I mean, sa same. I've certainly heard some people who are not pleased, and I think this, the the speed at which it all, you know, was like you find out Wednesday, Monday, no paper is is a bit craziness. Um, that said, you know, I, it's a business, as as Deputy Warden has said, but 
I, I do think it is incumbent upon us to just at least express our concern with that. I think, again, like uh, um, we're asking people in areas where internet service is not the best to access their news from salt wire by internet. Right. So it yeah. seems like a bit backwards, right? I think we're, we're putting people in a position that's not great. Um, the other thing that I, I had read an article in CBC, I think like at the end of November or something about it, and they were saying that there were some groups who were even trying to advocate for like drop-offs in central and, and locations. Like I, you know, for example, residents of Louisdale are not getting the paper delivered to their door, but n neither is the convenience store in the village. Right. Right. So if we, you know, I would be in support of a letter and I think that we should be advocating for some type of solution that's at least gets us closer to, you know, I can understand if door to door does not make sense, but mm -hmm. my understand, I mean, they're, they're delivering newspapers <laughs> in Cape Breton. So yeah. a stop at some locations may yeah. be possible and be feasible economically. I was thinking, I'm not sure if this is something that we'd want to um, make contact with the NSFM as well, only because it's something that, you know, it's, it's, it's a province-wide issue, not just <laughs> here, obviously. And maybe it would have a little more weight coming from the Nova Scotia Federation municipalities or several municipalities, mm -hmm. you know, at least. We may want to copy mm -hmm. them on that correspondence. Yeah. yeah. Because I'm yeah. sure we're obviously not going to be the only ones that are hearing this. It's, yeah. it's going on all over the province. And we could certainly encourage other municipalities through NSFM to, yep. uh, to reach yeah. out in yeah. a similar regard. Yeah. 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 Okay. So you'd be looking for a letter then um, just expressing our concern about the lack of home delivery and encouraging uh, encouraging uh, the company to consider at least drop-offs in central locations in various communities and encouraging others, other well, municipalities to uh, express yeah, <coughs> the same concern. I mean, I think we would want to request that they resume door-to-door -door delivery, yes. but yeah. that if that's not possible, yeah. then it, it, could we get to a second solution even? Yeah. Not ideal, but at least it would no. be more accessible than... Because I can think of some pretty large areas, even within my district, where they wouldn't have a store yeah. anywhere, you know, right. within a half an hour even, right? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For sure. Okay. Okay. Well, certainly um, yeah, that seems to make a lot of sense. I don't know, councillors, uh, if you would have any comments on that. No, I agree with yeah. both. Actually, one yeah. of them being the uh, you know as back as for the door to door convenience. Yep. However, you know I'm sure they pulled the plug for a reason, um, and I'm sure you know be it business, financial, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But again, I like the uh, I like the idea of if. In worst case scenario, maybe a central location. At least some yeah. people may have the opportunity to. Still or as central as humanly possible. Or as central as humanly possible. Deputy yeah. Warden. Yeah. It's yeah. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Okay. So could I have a motion to that effect? Uh, that a letter be uh, written requesting the resu resumption of door-to-door -door delivery, or at least considering drop-offs in semi-central locations and encouraging other municipalities to do the same. I'll make that motion. Thank you, Deputy Warden. Second. Thank you, Councillor Melanie Sampson. Any further discussion on that item? Okay, all, the, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, that motion is carried. Okay, um, next item on the agenda is community acknowledgements, and I do have a couple. Um, certainly <coughs> want to acknowledge our November Volunteer of the Month, who is Phil Baudouin. I, am I correct, pronouncing Baudouin? As a retiree who fell in love with Cape Breton and has made it his home. He is... Uh, married to his high school sweetheart for 42 years and has two adult daughters, has written three novels, a children's book, and is currently working on another novel. Uh, Phil contributes to his community in many ways and enjoys exploring his Acadian roots and has a keen interest in the Indigenous and Gaelic cultures. He's always working to improve our human social well-being and our environment. He's active in roadside cleanup efforts throughout his community and surrounding areas, which I know is close to our hearts as a council. We've certainly discussed... Uh, you know, that, that topic at length here. Um, and, uh, of course, the community area being, like, sort of around Highway 247, Chapel Cove Road, Wharf Road, Berkey's Cove, to name a few. So just wanted to take this moment to thank Phil for his contribution to his community and to our county. We really appreciate his efforts. And uh, 
I know he'll be receiving a package from the municipality as a, in recognition of that. Um, I also wanted to mention that the volunteer nomination form is currently available on our website, and we would please encourage people to uh, nominate people in uh, in your community if you see anybody going the extra mile, and we know there are lots of folks who do that, so especially yeah. at this time of year. Mm -hmm. Um, so many, th or, or also, I guess, uh, to your point that you made earlier, uh, Councillor Sampson, not everybody has great internet in this region, <laughs> so you could also reach out to your local councillor or the staff here at the office, and uh, and we'll be able to get that nomination form to you. So, um, okay, I also wanted to say a huge congratulations to the folks who have been putting on Christmas events so far in the county. It's been busy with uh, lots going on. Um, so just first, I guess, to the extended family of the Village on the Canal Association who put together the 25th Annual Festival of Trees, which saw 32 trees set up in the Lions Hall in St. Peter's this year, which was amazing. Um, and then the Christmas in the Village event, which was a partnership with the Village Commission, including a thank you for the big giant tree from River Roots. If you haven't seen it, it's sitting pretty in the Village Square right now. Um, and, uh, yeah, the... the the pretend wrapping paper is sort of coming off one of the blogs, so we'll have to have to repair that. But it looks it looks great there right now. Uh, truly a community effort because it's a big monster of a tree. Um, also wanted to thank the team who put together the recent Christmas parade and holiday wonderland experience in Lordways. I I don't know, Deputy Warden. Um, I didn't get a chance to go down on uh, a Saturday evening, but it looked spectacular from the photos. I just uh, huge congratulations to the volunteers in your community there that, that just pulled off an amazing event and I'm sure there are others in other communities. I, I don't know if anybody would like to speak up about that. <coughs> Some's coming up but I'll, over to you uh, uh, Councillor Sampson. Just wanted to congratulate the Lowesdale Volunteer Fire Department and their Ladies Auxiliary for a very um, uh, successful uh, food bank uh, drive on yes. Saturday I think of this weekend. They raised over $2,000 plus they got lots of food for the food bank so that's great. Tonight the Lowesdale Lions Club is hosting their tree lighting and uh, jingle bell walk so unfortunately couldn't make it to that because here we are uh, <laughs> the weather kind of um, held that off last week and just wanted to remind people that the uh, tree lighting at uh, Straight Richmond Hospital will be held next Monday night uh, at 6 o'clock so if you're able to join we're, we're going to miss that too because we'll be here but uh, certainly hope that lots of folks come out to that so great again big congratulations to all those folks thank you Councillor Melanie any other comments from anyone yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, myself, uh, like Councillor Melanie said, um, Madame Volunteer Fire Department, uh, uh, with their food bank, uh, raised I think uh, over twenty-two hundred dollars of cash and uh, a couple truckloads of food. So, congratulations to them and, and uh, great work on on their their part. Um, just want to congratulate and acknowledge everybody involved in uh, Noel Almadam, which was mm -hmm. last night. Uh, ever since uh, COVID uh, struck us. Uh, uh, Noel Almadam was uh, taken from the forge uh, and then just like a, a have a drive by more or less uh, where the kids just stay in their vehicles and it's nice and warm and they're in their <laughs> car seats and so they come up uh, one side of this driveway and around to the school and back down to her side and uh, yeah so it's a great event and I just want to acknowledge uh, everybody involved in that situation and also again the Almadam Volunteer Fire Department uh, there was uh, some events here last night, uh, one at the Clarestone and one at the New Horizon Senior. So, of course, there were some traffic jams. And, <laughs> uh, but the, the fire department took care of that. There was only one-way traffic coming, so people were able to get to those events. So just want to thank Great. everybody involved there. Great. And there was also a musical at uh, the Friends of St. John at the Anglican Church. Uh, so there was a, a musical event there. So and a festival of trees at the Caldwell Port. Mm -hmm. So uh, congratulations. So much going on. Uh, it's mm -hmm. it's have to be great, uh, great time yeah. of year and community yeah. spirit and community volunteer. It's it's great to see you. Yeah. Yeah. It's great to yeah. see everybody getting yeah. back out yeah. as well. You know, it was a couple of long years. So. Yeah, yeah just, I'm just going to throw in a short, you know, for anybody mm -hmm. watching that I had no, myself and uh, Councillor Sampson, uh, we had the honor of standing at the bottom by the tree, yeah. passing out treats to all yeah. the kids. But uh, Councillor Sampson, wanted to traumatize a few of the kids so <laughs> when they got there he said we're collecting all the 
treats that you got all the way around. Oh, oh, so oh, oh, the kids oh, were like, oh. some of the kids were like, no. <laughs> Shut the window, mom. There was, a, there was a few that were willing to give back all the treats. So it was, oh. was kind of nice to see. But. Yeah, yeah, it was it was funny the first kid. I said, uh, we're just collecting stockings full of treats. I said, you don't have any, do you? And they're like, uh. So yeah, it was fun. Yeah, it That's was great. great. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, that's awesome. So if there's no other uh, community acknowledgements, <coughs> I'm sure there's a ton more we could mention, but, uh, but we'll leave it at that. Um, and we'll move on to the next item on the agenda, which is correspondence. We have a couple of pieces of correspondence where action is required. Um, and the first is um, from our uh, revenue manager, Clint Thompson, <coughs> regarding the tax sale of properties uh, in February uh, in 2023 regarding minimum bids. So you'll see from the memo that uh, Clint has uh, made a few recommendations, uh, one being that um, District 1 property number 01415298 uh, be, that, that council authorize uh, the selling of that property for a minimum acceptable bid of 5000 that if it doesn't sell at that uh, minimum bid, then to proceed and sell the property for basically any bid. Uh, I believe that one has been on the tax sale for, three times. it's been three times uh, so far and hasn't uh, been successfully uh, sold yet. So would councillors be in support of the recommendation from the revenue manager as such? I am and I'll make the motion to proceed as okay. recommended. Okay, could I have a seconder on that? I guess I'll second it for question purposes. Okay, thank you, Councillor Digden. So it's been moved by Councillor Melanie Sampson and seconded by Councillor uh, Mike Digden that Council accept the recommendation of the Revenue Manager and CFO and the Council authorize the Revenue Manager and CFO to sell the property number 01415298 for a minimum acceptable bid of $5,000 and if this property does not sell for the minimum, minimum acceptable bid to proceed and sell the property for any bid. So... Question. Yeah, I just yeah. I hadn't seen the five thousand dollar figure. I don't know if I missed that. Okay, maybe I, I'm seeing it here in my notes, but it might could have been just conversation um, okay, that we had. Yeah, I know oh, so the property the, you're referring to because it's yeah. The memo shows months. that the last that the last minimum bid was ten thousand dollars. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So this is just a recommended amount by staff. It's not in the memo. It's, it's just a recommended motion. Okay. 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 Yeah, because yeah, my only thought on that was should it just be. Almost any bit at Just this point. Bit. It's been three times, you know. Uh, yeah. Just needs to go. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think that's basically what it says. <laughs> yeah. We're yeah, going to so say yeah. we'd like to have 5000 but we're at we're the end. We're going to take one. Well, the way it works, though, is that when this property comes back up at tax sale in February, is that we'll re go through all the minimum bids set by council from the first tax sale to now. So if, let's say, the first bid was $100,000, we would ask for any bids at $100,000 before we go down to the next level. So we're not used to seeing properties go to tax sale like three consecutive times. Mm -hmm. Really, in our opinion, what should be happen is if it doesn't go at one, then the second tax sale should include a motion to have any bid. So you'll see on the next set of properties where it only went once, now it's going the second time. Really, what we should be doing is just is selling it, if it can sell for at least a dollar in the second tax sale, just because of the amount of time that goes into it, the administration cost, mm -hmm. the fees that are getting added to the accounts, we'll just end up writing them off anyways. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason for the for the any bid. Okay. I suppose this one was a little bit uh, unique just in the sense that that number was awfully high, right, based yeah. on some <coughs> of the costs associated with that property. Yeah. It's not very often, I can't think of any other properties that we've seen that that came up at those numbers. <laughs> it's huge. No, but we're going to see them. We are going to start seeing them, and uh, I guess that's that's why I seconded the motion only so we could have conversation on it. I, again, I don't believe in giving away, uh, and I don't like saying it like that, but giving away taxpayers' money, and if we're going to pretty much give this land away for free, then I see no reason to give it away at all. Um, the county of Richmond can proclaim the land just as easy as um, anyone else, I guess. I don't know how that works, but I... I just find it very disturbing that we paid so much money to tear down an old co-op, um, have it, I guess, the landfill, the tipping fees, the construction fees, and now we're giving the, the land away, a corner lot, for little or nothing. And again, it seems to be that that was the, um, that was the past practice. However, moving forward, I think if we can't get what land is worth, then we're better off just to leave it within the municipality. 
Okay. To to so do, are you suggesting a different kind of use for it or? Well, again, if we're giving, you know, it, it's it's a corner lot with water and sewer. Um, right. Just the corner lot alone with water and sewer is worth more. I know people are waiting for it to get to a certain price. And that being said, you know, I, I don't think we, I know we're not in, we're not uh, landlords and we're not in the, uh, I guess, the business of keeping property, but I don't believe we're in the business of <coughs> using taxpayers' dollars to dismantle the property um, and then give it away for nothing. Okay. So, you know, I guess that's a question for procedural question from us, I, I guess, or I'm not sure how that would work if, you know, if, for Richmond County. Right, currently, the land is not owned by Richmond County, you know, correct? So, yeah, so the, the years ago, a long time ago, my understanding is that the, the municipality, based on DMJ, has the ability to vest the property. Mm -hmm. But... Um, we stopped that a number of years ago, and the, and the main reason in, is for that is because it's exactly that, is that the land has no value. So again, you're seeing this property uh, go to tax sale, you know, three consecutive times and going to a fort. So if it hasn't sold for 10, it's likely that it's going to sell for literally nothing. So unless the municipality has, you know, unless it's an attractive piece of property or the municipality has an intended use, I see no reason to, to vest it. We would just recommend selling it at tax sale. This is the process. It is unfortunate, as Councillor Digden says, is that in these situations we're taking a big hit, but we're just basically following the MGA and trying to collect the best amount of money or the most amount of money that we can uh, to recoup some of the costs. Okay. Thank you, Jason. What did it go for the last tax sale? Ten. Ten. Was it ten? Ten. ten, ten was that listed here? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> My my worry would be, I think that um, if we end up holding on to it, that it's it's a, you know, it's it's not generating any revenue, right? So it's it's only making things worse over time. Whereas even if we don't get, I know it it is disappointing to mm -hmm. not get very much for it now, but let's say we get a small amount for it now. Well, hopefully that's turned into something and developed, and in time there's tax revenue coming from that. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. The idea is that it comes off our accounts mm -hmm. receivable list and that someone hopefully will pay taxes on it on a go-forward basis, right? right? So there'll be additional revenue in that. Yeah. In and that hopefully sale. develop it and yeah. do something okay. with it. So, and, and again, to your point, you know, I guess if, it, if the value of the property sells for 5000 and the value of the corner lot is only five or $6,000, then the what we're going to make is going to be peanuts off it as opposed to... I just just yeah. a thought, as we go down the list... I'm sure we're going to run into them again. <laughs> again, it's not like we're selling a piece of swamp in the middle of nowhere. We're selling a corner lot. in, And I, I do understand that nobody has jumped on it. However, the first number was very, very high. It was, but I mean, even if nobody nobody jumped out at a 10000 either, right? So will this be a sealed bid, or is it an open... Public uh, auction. What, pardon me? Public, Public auction. auction. Okay. 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 Now, is is there water and sewer in energy? I don't think there is across the bridge. There is. No, no. I think the water and sewer run. Oh, Chris will be able to better answer that. But the water and sewer, I believe, runs to the church, right? And then it's ran privately from the church across. I think, isn't it? I think we had this discussion. So one I time. don't think there is water and sewer. Yeah. There. No. I think there might be water going across to the campus. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, but nothing going to the right the to the resident. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. I'm fairly sure we did have this discussion one of the other times <laughs> yeah. right, on this yeah. specific property. Of course, it comes up every time. But yes, yes. yeah, because I I didn't realize that either before. That yeah. so there isn't isn't a hookup. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we do have a motion on the floor um, <coughs> to proceed with the revenue manager's recommendation. Um, is there any further discussion on this item? Okay. So all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Made from Councillor Digton. Okay, that motion is carried. All right, thank you, everyone. Uh, great points, and it's a, it is a stark reality we're facing for sure. Mm -hmm. So um, the next uh, piece of uh, the uh, revenue manager's memo referred to properties in District 2, 3, and 5. Um, Just a yeah, correction, so. the first one is actually in District 5, not 2. Oh, is it? okay. <laughs> Plan is that the Clan and Road? Yeah. Throwing my pen around here. Yes, it is. Yeah. You're right. District five. Thank you. So in District three and five, um, it's 
uh, I'll list the property numbers uh, when it comes time to do a motion, but the recommendation, I guess, at this time is to um, is uh, to have a minimal acceptable minimum acceptable bid of principal only, and if they do not sell for the minimum acceptable bid, to sell them for half the principal amount only, and if they don't sell for that, then to proceed and sell the properties for any bid. And that gives staff, I guess, the option to, you know, um, unload the properties because they have already been to a tax sale and I think it was June, June, June. 2022. So. so this would be, correct me if I'm wrong, this is a little bit different than we've done previously, right? Because mm -hmm. generally we've yeah. only dropped them to principal only. That's right. Yeah. No, for the first no, time No, in, in the past during the, um, during the tax sales, they used to go... Um, no, I mean, since we've been here... When they didn't go the first time, we only then dropped it to principal only, correct? Yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I don't mean yes. years yeah. ago. Oh, yeah. 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 Prior yeah. councils, just yeah. yeah, on the first. Yeah, I guess the second time around. Yeah. yeah, first time back. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So. Um, no, and, and I'm not. I'm, I'm. I think I'm okay with the staff's recommendation on that. I mean, these aren't um, huge numbers on these, and and it's probably a lot easier if if they're able to be moved, whether or not you know we're. For the most part, the difference we're talking is hundreds of dollars, not thousands, mm -hmm. right? Correct. Okay. Uh, any other comments on this? So is there, I guess, is there a larger list than what we're seeing here? Or this is just what the... This is just the list of uh, requested minimum bids. Okay, there is a yeah. larger list, yeah, but those... <laughs> <good>. <laughs> yeah, this is not, not the not full I don't know that that's good. <laughs> not good, <laughs> not but, good, but, not but good, yes. But, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so any other questions or comments on the recommendation from staff? I don't know. I, I would be, I would tend to lean towards just principal only, only because I just feel like we're still not in normal times of tax sales. Mm -hmm. Like that June was maybe not as normal as, because we had it in person in June, right? It was in person and it was packed. Oh. Okay, never mind. <laughs> I'm with you. <laughs> well, and I think probably well, because we had had a couple sealed bids before that, yeah, right? Then so, I, yeah, then I'm fine with that. Yeah, yeah. that's fine. Okay. I was just, I didn't realize that. Thank you. I should have asked first. Okay. Deputy Warden, did you have a, I thought you No, I was just going to yeah. say I, I could go either way on it. But I, I mean, I had even, I had heard from some people that they like the sealed bids as well, right? Yes, and, so and did I, yeah. At the end yeah. of the day, it doesn't matter to me. I'm not partaking. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Um, and is, is right now, are we currently doing all of the all of the tax sales public auction, or will we go like um, one sealed bid, one public? Well, our plan was to resume public auction, okay. but if council's desire is to do one of each a year, because we're doing two a year, we could look at that as well. Okay. It's really up to you guys. Generally speaking, before COVID, it was all public <coughs> auction. Yes. We hadn't done a sealed tender before. Yeah, but I didn't remember your comments that the sealed tender went that tender went really. It went well. really well. I mean, I know some people are of the notion that it's not as open and transparent because it's a sealed bid, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it went really well, and a lot of people we've got a lot of good feedback about it as well. So the bid so. opening is public, correct? Yes, this yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, well, in the meantime, I think we'll deal with the recommendation from staff at hand, which is to. Um, to have the bids go forward uh, first at uh, principal only and then half the principal and then only any amount. <coughs> so could I have a motion to that effect? I'll make that motion. Thank you, Deputy Warden. Could I have a seconder, please? I'll second. Thank you, Councillor Melanie Sampson. So it's been moved by the Deputy Warden and seconded by Councillor Melanie Sampson. The Council accept the recommendation of the Revenue Manager and CFO and the Council authorize the Revenue Manager and CFO to sell property numbers 0246541803739511 and 0794406 for a minimal minimum acceptable bid of principal only and if these properties do not sell for the minimum acceptable bid to sell them for half the principal only amount and if they don't sell for half the principal only to proceed and sell the properties for any bid <laughs> That's a mouth. Please don't make me say that again. <laughs> <I'm just gonna laughs> Is there any further discussion? <laughs> just going to ask if you could repeat the. Could you repeat the motion? <laughs> <laughs> so again, I would only, uh, I would only emphasize, like, you know, the minimal acceptable will be this fine that uh, open for any amount 
I feel is uh, we're giving land away that, you know, mm -hmm. not that we may have use for, but again, that we are giving away for nothing. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Speaker. Uh, is there any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? No. Councillor Dickton is registered in a vote. All right. Thank you, everyone. Uh, that motion is carried. Okay. The next item on the agenda is um, from Jason Martel, CFO, regarding the Village of St. Peter's guarantee request. Um, so this item comes from, obviously, the village, and uh, they are seeking uh, a draft guarantee uh, as per the memo that was provided by the CFO. Um, and maybe I'll just open that for discussion. We would be looking to pass the attached resolution in the package, uh, which I'll, <laughs> again, I'll read one time only. <laughs> <laughs> So I would like to open for discussion um, before we get into that. Um, so any questions or comments from Council? All right. Um, so uh, at this time, they're seeking approval for a loan guarantee in the amount of $56,407.50 for the purpose of purchasing a new Kubota um, cab tractor for the sidewalk. So, um, so, uh, as per the MGA, uh, we would need to uh, we would need to approve that uh, guarantee here at this council. So, I'd be looking for a motion for from council to approve the attached draft guarantee. I believe it was in the package. It was. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. I'll and, make that motion. Yep. Yeah, thank you, Councillor uh, Mike Digden. Could I have a seconder on that, please? I'll second that. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Deputy Warden. Are you ready? Here we go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> whereas the village of St. Peter's is a village situated within the municipality of the county of Richmond, whereas the village of St. Peter's has, with the approval of the electors of the village, determined to borrow the aggregate principal amount of $56,407.50 for the purpose of purchasing a sidewalk tractor, whereas the village of St. Peter's has requested that the municipality guarantee said borrowing, and whereas Section 89 of the Municipal Government Act provides that a municipality may guarantee a loan for a village, and whereas Section 88.3 of the Municipal Government Act provides that no guarantee of a borrowing by, by a municipality shall have effect unless the Minister of Municipal Housing, Municipal Affairs and Housing has approved of the proposed borrowing or debenture of the proposed guarantee. Uh, be it therefore resolved that the Municipality of the County of Richmond does hereby approve the borrowing by the Village of St. Peter's the aggregate principal amount of $56,407.50 for the purposes set out above. That's subject to the approval of the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing. The municipality does unconditionally guarantee repayment of the principal and interest of the borrowing so made, and that upon the issue of the debentures, the mayor and clerk of the municipality, the warden and clerk of the municipality, mm -hmm. do sign the guarantee attached to each of the debentures and affix thereto the corporate seal of the municipality. So any further discussion on that resolution? Okay, so all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion is carried. Thank you, everyone. Um, okay, next item on the agenda is a memo from uh, Kathleen Jeffrey, the Manager of Accounting and Finance, regarding a uh, recommendation to write off inactive accounts. And uh, just ask our councillors if they have any comments on that. Any concerns? I just have a question, and perhaps we did this last year because mm -hmm. I did miss a meeting at this time last year. So, can I? I'm, my understanding from the memo is that these are inactive accounts because PBSC told us to mark them as inactive. Mm -hmm. And I did I did read through some of the um, the reason descriptions or whatever. But I'm can I just get a little more education on it? I'm just not. Sure that I sure. Totally Maybe I'll refer that either to CAO um, to, to yep. our CFO. Absolutely. Yeah. So in the memo, basically the main reasons would be uh, land expropri land expropriation, mobile homes sold off property, and double assessments. But if you look down at the last page uh, as uh, provided in the memo, yeah. you're right in saying this is direct from PBSC, so it's it's out of our control, so to speak. Oh, okay. It's formality to write them off. So the main reasons are either double assessments. Okay. 
or consolidation parcels. So if two lands got consolidated or whatever. Okay. Or if the assessment was, so by double assessments, meaning if that property, if they PVSC deemed that that property was already assessed on another account number, then really it's being double assessed. Okay. And what does work order inspection Mean. Yeah, so that one is just that basically someone was sent out to inspect mm -hmm. it, but most I did look at that. Some most of those reasons are basically double assessments. Okay. Mm -hmm. So someone may have called, or maybe someone from our office may have sent them out and said, "Hey, can you go take a look at this?" Okay. So PVSC triggered a work order, and basically they deemed it was a double assessment, and it's an active they inactivate the account. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, it's fairly standard practice. We yeah. may have done it once, I think, since this council was elected. Yes, right. I, I did miss the meet like this meeting last year. I missed, so it could have happened at that yeah, meeting, and I just missed it. It's so fairly it's standard well. practice. Yeah. Okay. So it's a clean thank up you. for us. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> it actually gives a breakdown. Yeah. Like you said, Jason, on the. Um, yeah. On no, the I know. I just thing. didn't know what the things meant. Yeah. Yeah. What it, what, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's yeah. Yeah. No. Great. Thank you, Jason. Um, so we do have a recommendation um, to accept, or we do have a, a, a motion we would need to accept the recommendation if council's in agreement with that. Could I have a motion to that effect, please? I'll make that motion. Thank you, Deputy Warden. Could I have a seconder? I'll second that. Thank you, Councillor Melanie Sampson. So the motion is has been moved by Deputy Warden, seconded by Councillor Sampson, that the Council accept the recommendation of the Manager of Accounting and Finance and the CFO and the Council authorize the Manager of, account, of Accounting and Finance and the CFO to proceed and write off the principal and interest associated with the inactive accounts in the total amount of $28,209.43. Any further discussion on that? Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion is carried. Okay, thank you everyone. So the next item on the agenda is again another um, correspondence item where action is required. And it is a request from Richmond River Roots um, <coughs> for a letter of support uh, regarding the, um, I think the building of a new greenhouse or, hang on, I'm trying to a second. load it up here. Second battery. S yes, okay. the, the terminology is, uh, there we go. A second climate battery greenhouse, to be specific. So, um, essentially, they're uh, they're proposing um, to the Sustainable Communities Challenge Fund to receive funding for that uh, for that work, um, which would be, I think, a great addition to their property. Mm -hmm. um, and they're seeking a letter of support. The grant submission deadline is December sixteenth. So, would councillors be um, would councillors be in favor of providing that letter of support? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So could I have a motion, please, uh, to that effect? Yeah, I'll make that motion. Thank you, Councillor Sean Sampson. And second. I'll second that. Thank you, Deputy Warden. So the, it's been moved by uh, Councillor Sean Sampson, seconded by Deputy Warden, that um, the Warden draft a letter of support for the Richmond River Roots <coughs> Society for their SCCF proposal to obtain a second climate battery greenhouse. <laughs> Any further discussion? <laughs> yeah, for me, just want to wish them luck. Yeah. I mean, that being in the food business, um, <laughs> knowing uh, what's happening the last you know, six months to a year, even recently with the price of produce going through the roof. Yeah. You know, so when I see access to fresh and affordable produce, you know, I uh, I wish them all the luck in the world and would support yeah. any, any help we can give them for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Well said. Yeah. They got some good news today as well. They had applied for a grant through the East Coast Credit Union, <laughs> and they received a ten thousand dollar grant as well towards that's their nice. So they're well on their way, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and that's that is excellent news because the yeah. SCCF requires that matching funding, right? So yeah. it's it's really wonderful. Yeah. yeah. So it's exciting awesome. times for them. I, yeah. I was there this summer. They got a great little operation. They do. Yeah. That's right. They've won awesome. one less tree and yeah. thousand more dollars. Yeah, well, they, right. they, need, they need the room. <laughs> they need, they need, the, need the room they now. Need the room. Yeah. That's right. That's okay, awesome. so all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? All right, that motion is carried. 
So the next item on our agenda is um, unfinished business related to the Atlantic Biosphere Project. So this did come before Council and we had recommended that staff kind of do some digging on it. So maybe over to you, uh, sure. CAO Troy, for an update. Yep, uh, Madam Morgan, through you to Council and uh, everybody else present. Uh, we did reach out to the gentleman uh, that's uh, proposing this. Uh, we have a meeting scheduled with him tomorrow. <laughs> Uh, weather permitting, uh, he was coming here, uh, but we'll call him in the morning if that just has to be moved to later in the week. He is reviewing uh, the application and uh, the meeting is with myself and the CFO to make sure that we clearly understand uh, the obligations of uh, the municipality as he looks to move this project forward. Okay. So we'll, we'll bring that back to you guys once we meet with him. Great. Okay, any questions for... Troy on that? Council? Sound good? Okay, thank you, Troy. You're welcome. Next item on the agenda is uh, the review of checks issued for November 2022. Do we have any questions for uh, the CAO uh, on those? Okay, uh, hearing none, we'll move on. Uh, the next item is the review of action items. Um, so I know I did want to just give a quick update on a couple of those. Um, I have put out a request to gather some additional information about the washouts on Open Road, uh, including from the MLA before formalizing a letter, or not Open Road, but in Oban, uh, before formalizing a letter. Um, and the also the marketing levy letter has gone to Minister Dunn, as well as the federal boundary review letter's been completed and sent to MP Calloway. So um, those are taken care of. Any questions on the action items? Okay, um, so then the next item is items added to the agenda. So we'll cover off the boundary review um, for first uh, because we did uh, uh, we did have I guess some email conversations back and forth, and certainly had discussed at a last special meeting about this. Um, John Hesseltine with Stantec is going to be in the region on Wednesday evening, um, or. Thursday afternoon. Thursday afternoon before 6 p.m. Yep. Uh, if we would like to meet with him in person to really look at this. Because I think at our last special meeting, you know, what we had recommended, he had come back after that with additional recommendations, which, you know, some of us kind of felt was maybe a little bit more of a significant change. Uh, but we do have an opportunity to sit with him in person to chat through what he's talking about. And would like to know if council is willing to, to do that at this stage of the game. If he would be available Wednesday evening. So oh, yeah, it's a must. 7 p.m.? Yeah. <clears throat> Wednesday, yeah, for sure, yeah, Wednesday. I don't I don't know yet, but proceed. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And, and if, I'd have to check my calendar. Yeah, know. and if folks need to call into whatever, <coughs> yeah. you know what I mean, we'll, yeah. we'll make that happen. So we're talking Wednesday of this week, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Good. yeah. So this won't be really a presentation or an update or where we're making decisions. I think it's just going to be, again, a consultation where we have an opportunity to understand <coughs> How he's working through the numbers, um, so we'll we'll start with that. Great. You'll find your um, spreadsheet is working. My spreadsheets are always working, Councillor ah. Digden. <laughs> I didn't want to put you on the spot. <laughs> I do find it's working. <laughs> Maybe you can bring that on uh, Wednesday night. Yes, I can. So that yeah. we can pick yeah. some scenarios because yeah. it is a pretty fast spreadsheet. Yeah. Like it doesn't take long just to move. Yeah, no, it's scenarios quick. around. Yeah, we'll do. <laughs> God. <laughs> Sorry for questioning your spreadsheets. That's okay. <laughs> I'm just close to my heart, those spreadsheets, you know. <laughs> That's not a joke. <laughs> All right. Um, so thanks, everyone, for that. Um, the next item on the agenda was to add an in-camera item, which I think we'll take care of, but we should probably open for question period first. Um, our, there's no one in our gallery right now, but we'll just give it a few minutes um, in case anybody would like to call in. Uh, if there are media watching, we'll, we'll take questions uh, after the meeting. Um, question period would be more for uh, members of the public. Uh, and uh, it's not restricted to items on the agenda. So we'll give that a minute. Send it off to John. Mm -hmm. Great. Me. 
like Shelly's expecting a phone call. <laughs> Just in case, yeah. All right, it, I don't think our phone is ringing, so thank you, uh, Shelly, for uh, being on deck for that. Um, so with that, uh, question period, we'll call it closed, and I will ask for a motion to move us in camera, please. I'll make that motion. Thank you, Councillor Sean Sampson. Can I have a seconder, please? I'll second that. Okay, thanks, Deputy Warden. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, that motion is carried. Thanks, everyone.